Hi guys, welcome to my show, my video. This is Raj Sao, founder of The Way, a Christ First Church. And it's an online church. At the moment online, but one day, who knows, we'll have a real church, physical church. Today's uh, video is very interesting, guys. Promise. It is. Because it contrasts something what Jesus taught and what Paul taught and they were very contradictory, it appears. Because this is a very important theme of the Protestant church, our mainstream church, if you will. They have always taught us that we that salvation is a free gift for all those who believe, right? You must have heard this an umpteen number of times at your churches, especially on Sunday uh, uh, services, you know. They keep drumming on, pounding on that. It's a free gift because this is what Paul taught. But I will be leaving it to you today to judge or decide who's right and who's wrong. And I will give you two pictures and juxtapose them. Side by side, I'll place them. The verses of Paul and what does Jesus say about this so-called free gift? Is salvation a free gift? That is the question and also the title of this video. You decide, guys. I'll just place the verses of Paul which are rampantly used by our churches. Which the Pauline um, verses, verses of self-proclaimed apostle Paul who had no witnesses, nobody saw his conversion except he himself. But I won't go into that. I put videos on that. So what is this man saying about the free nature of salvation to all those who believe? Verses. By juxtaposing them, placing them side by side. What did Jesus say about this free gift? Is it a free gift according to Christ? So I, and I will leave it up to you. How? And to your wisdom and judgment that how do you perceive it when you compare them, put them side by side. This is a technique Jesus himself taught me through the spirit. Raj always plays verses side by side. So the people who are seeing or listening have two sides of the coin, like two sides of the story. Exactly as prudent church, uh, judge, uh, let's say the courts. And any judge would do is put two sides and he would like to hear out. We should also do the same. Hear both sides. So let's hear both parties. Paul and Jesus without further fuss or ado. I had placed a video of this but it went long like 35-40. It's rich in theology but to make it uh, synopsize rather or summarize that this video is coming into play a year and a half later because I understand some people want shorter videos I should be able to fold this up in less than 20 minutes bear with me it's half the size of any of our Sunday service right it's about 40 minutes so bear with me you'll get a lot today I promise guys you'll get loads and chock full of information from both parties so you are the judge and these two Christ Jesus on the right and Paul on the left now they are placing forward their arguments and you are the judge. I am just placing the information. Consider me as a clerk of the uh, court that here is what Paul says and here is what Jesus says. And you are the judge sitting there hearing now both parties. Let's start with Paul guys without any delay. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. Which is true. God says that in in Ezekiel 18 he established the sinning soul shall die so he picks it up from there Paul was brilliant at uh, the Old Testament okay that's all we had anyways Torah and he was very good at it so he picks that up the wages of sin is death but is the addition going on mixing if you will but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So he's saying it's guaranteed. It's free gift. And of course he says you've been saved by grace through faith and not by works. There's no man may boast. Ephesians 8, 9. Second Ephesians 2, 8, 9. So this is what he's saying. As he said there. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. First time. Second, Romans 5.15. But the free gift is not like that of transac uh, transgression. 
for if by transgression for the one many died much more did the grace of god and by the gift gift by the grace of the one man abound to many so he is repeatedly talking about saved by grace through faith okay and of course this is the big one here ephesians 2:8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and not by yourselves salvation is the gift of god argues paul in ephesians 2:8 keep that in mind guys in second corinthians 9:15 paul says thanks be to god for his indescribable gift before i move on friends realize or understand one thing probably you know already gift is always free remember so even if it doesn't write free have you heard of somebody giving you a gift then asking for money then it's not a gift right very simple very basic so whenever he talks about gift all means that it's something you have uh, come or achieved or gained without making any payment it has been given to you delivered to you free so gift is always free so he is repeatedly pounding on that all right do till now Romans said 32 he who did not spare his own son but delivered him over to all of us will he not also with him freely give us these things so this is uh, four five times he is saying the same thing it's gift of god free gift of god to all those who believe in him i don't want to go any further because you must have heard this a hundred maybe a thousand times in your church if you've been going long enough <laughs> sooner or later you'll keep hearing this again and again and again i was pounded till i became sick of this when i realized that there was something else and that's let's examine what was that something else jesus spoke about so let's examine what does jesus say about is this a free gift according to christ so i gave you one picture with five verses of paul hopefully you got them and try to paste them on the description section so you can examine it for yourself always always examine everything you hear from teachers whoever it may be this this whoever best way to understand bible is to study yourself and study different uh, sides especially words of jesus when such doctrines are being spewed at us or thrown at us hmm, or tossed at us because we have to understand both sides of the coins or the two sides of the story there are two sides we have to examine both side otherwise it's what cherry picking what is cherry picking i found that was the main culprit in deception in the bible by our churches who tagged paul or who followed paul because cherry picking is an art where you choose some verses you like and you would mean you and i and we make a doctrine based on the verses we like and we completely sometimes ruthlessly ignore and reject what others have said especially jesus at the end of this you may find that in play or this cherry picking is happening here these churches were basing their teachings you it's a free gift salvation is a free gift based on paul and pauline uh, doctrine where is jesus why was it not juxtaposed or put some play side by side why anyway i hope you understand a bit of cherry picking has occurred it's a very dangerous game often very evil the art of cherry picking and making a bouquet or a beautiful dish out of that i pick this 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 and make my own salad right that's not bible guys that could be a good salad or a bouquet jesus starts in luke 14 verses 25 to 33 okay i will be reading them out rather quickly hopefully to uh, save some time to put uh, complete this within 20 minutes okay the backdrop is pretty clear because it starts with this luke again 14 25 to 33 large crowds were traveling with jesus christ and he turned to them and said what to the crowds now he's telling a bunch of people remember that if anyone and that's a very large crowd out there could be 100000 10000 5000 we don't know if anyone says jesus comes to me and does not hate their mother and 
wife and children and brothers and sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple so remember guys now we are putting juxtaposing jesus's words side by side with what we just read about paul and now we hear something a bit different from jesus he says again i repeat luke 14 26 if anyone comes to me and does not hate their father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple so unless you place jesus above everybody else including your life you are not his disciple is as simple as that if you are fond you would mean you and i i am always with you guys in everything because i am no nothing better or in a greater position we are all in the same boat here so if jesus saying if and this is a warning if you're placing anything above me anything that because once you include life that is everything like money your property your mother your brother he doesn't want to bother about all that we he has to be the numero uno the top cheese in our life the boss the uh, that's why he's called call we ask him to asks us to call him lord he is the boss of our life of our soul of our body of everything that's what he's saying but if you're not willing to do place him above the all, him above all these things of the world including our lives we are not even his disciples how do we get saved guys if we are not even his disciples is the simple question number 1 okay secondly he puts a second condition now i'm juxtaposing reminding you of what paul has says it's a free gift by faith alone and here he's saying something diametrically or dramatically different significantly different because he's saying that if you're going to place anybody above me now he's putting caveats then how is it a free gift and it gets steeper and steeper this is just the beginning guys and then he says 27 words luke 14 27 and whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple what does that mean do we carry physical crosses no it means to obey everything carry out all things he taught or you are not my disciple you know what is the subheading in niv and other bibles the cost of becoming jesus's disciple he's telling these crowds before you contemplate before you decide even or consider to become my disciple consider these things or don't become my disciple he was not in a hurry he even cursed pharisees with condemnation paul was one of them by the way he he meant business jesus was a man of business and he never minced his words he never sugar coated so you understood this part hopefully you got that whoever is not willing to obey jesus like follow him picking up the cross cannot be his disciples exactly as like the person who places others and other things of the world before christ cannot be his disciple so it's a hard calling you must have realized even by these two word verses it gets even st- more steep from here then jesus says verse 28 suppose one of you wants to build a tower now he's drawing out a huge analogy and a very wonderful accurate analogy that only jesus can do i'm just reading him i'm saying nothing of my words not thinking here or adding anything nothing so all jesus is speaking to you the judge is you right now dear viewer you decide because all this will be questioned on the last day where are my words he will say what did you do dump them or what tell us suppose one of you he's telling us wants to build a tower so think it think about it guys visualize that you want to make a building a massive building here that's what he's talking about he's using the analogy of a tower which was the highest structure in those days like a, let's say a 30 story building or 100 story building for us nowadays jesus says want you for sit down and estimate the cost remember this word is using the analogy of a big build making a pricey expensive building jesus says won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money 
to complete it he's saying before you start making a huge building of 100 stories won't you sit down calculate all the estimates how much will it uh, require finally it co costs money right and huge amounts of money in this case to finish that project then he goes on to say in 29th verse for if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it everyone who sees it will ridicule you it's like he, you didn't know what that this will cost let's say 100 million dollars didn't you know that how did you start making this building so they, he is pointing out that, that that you'll be ridiculed not to mention all those financial losses that will occur bankruptcy included then everyone who sees will ridicule you saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish why did you even start then you know that's what Jesus is saying they will ridicule you so consider the costs and then he gives a second analogy or suppose a king is about to go to war with another king won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able to ten, able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000 people or soldiers so won't he consider like I have 10,000 somebody is coming with 20,000 I am wanting to have a war won't you consider the consequences and see your limitations or resources this is what Jesus is saying if he is not able to he will send a delegation while the other king is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace so Jesus is giving a solution that if you are not you do not have the resources don't do it now he comes to the most important the punch line here is this Luke 14 33 in the same way those of you he is telling us who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples Soak it up guys. These are terms of salvation of Christ Jesus. This only savior humans have witnessed in this universe ever. These are his terms. Luke 14, 25 to 33. And he repeats that throughout the Bible when he speaks on obedience and works. So guys, as you see very clearly in the same way those of you is telling us who want to be even his disciples are not willing to give up everything like your houses your cars your jobs your and even your life if needed as Jesus laid down as all his 12 disciples hand chosen ones hand picked one laid down you are not even worthy of becoming my disciples now this is a steep call, a price. It's a hard call and a steep price to be paid. Everything. Now I want you to decide guys. Here is false. Free. I read out. Won't take your time. You guys are smart. You understand. Kept saying it's free gift, free gift. Our churches say that. And here is Jesus. Free versus everything. It's not just costly. It's beyond costly. Thank you guys for uh, seeing this video or viewing my video. Think about it. What did Paul say? How did Jesus explain what is needed? And also I will give you a homework as clinching evidence. Always go to the last day. Always some uh, people or smart uh, lawyers will always go to the final judgment of big cases which have happened in the past. So they know how did it play out. Then they start reading the argument. So they know. They keep the end in mind. Always. Always. Always keep the end in mind. And that's Matthew 25, 31, 46. The goats and sheep. Last day judgment day. Vision. Or accurately. Which accurately tells us. Gives us information. What criteria Jesus used. Was it by faith we were saved? Was it by grace? A word he never uttered in the entire Bible was that used as Paul thought said by grace through faith and it's a free gift 
or was something else used something else was used guys these were rejected so you have a clear understanding revelation 20 11 15 that account and read that with uh, matthew 25 31 46 called the goats and sheep all this was rejected jesus's words are very clearly uh, used what he said he used on the day of judgment it was as i i'm giving a broad hint jesus's words one those who were willing to give away everything they had every little thing was saved all right guys i'll leave give you that as a little bit of homework i won't read out matthew 25 31 46 but now you have two pictures free gift is it a free gift guys according to you after you heard both sides and jesus wants everything thank you and god bless you